Hello, this video on duration gap shows how by calculating the difference between the duration of assets and duration of liabilities, we're able to measure the impact of interest rate risk on a bank's net worth. And so unlike the case of income gap, which focuses on the impact of interest rate risk on a bank's net interest income presented in a different video, duration gap focuses on a bank's uh, net worth which is the value of the bank's equity. Bank immunization is motivated by the maturity mismatch between bank assets and liabilities. Now remember that the longer the maturity of an interest-bearing instrument such as a bond, uh, the greater is going to be the impact of a change in interest rates on the value of that instrument. Now specific to banks though, notice that most of their assets are loans and uh, they are interest bearing so they are interest sensitive and more importantly they typically have longer maturities than liabilities which are mostly customer deposits. As a result when interest rates rise the value of assets tend tends to fall more than the value of liabilities which causes the uh, value of the bank's equity to drop. So that's the kicker right there. So bank immunization is a strategy that matches the duration of assets uh, with that of uh, the liabilities so as to immunize the impacts of interest rate changes on the performance measure, the bank's net worth. So this is the approximate calculation, but if you want to calculate it exactly, then you'd have to apply this adjustment factor, which is the ratio of bank liabilities uh, and the bank's uh, assets. So this tells you, though, that for us to calculate duration gap, we first need to calculate the duration of uh, the bank's assets and separately also the duration of the bank's liabilities using the balance sheet values or the balance sheet items that change in value when interest rates change. Now, importantly, if this difference, this duration gap is zero, then it tells us that the bank's net worth is going to be insulated from any adverse changes in interest rates. As I'm going to show uh, in the examples to follow. So, But in general, since we're dealing with balance sheet items, so the duration of assets is going to be the weighted average of the duration of all the interest sensitive items and likewise the duration of the bank's liabilities. So using this simple example right here, this bank analyst has um, calculated ever so carefully the duration of each of these items right here. So let's say that this red column shows the correct uh, uh, duration for all of the uh, red sensitive items right there. And these are the uh, weights. The weights are simply how much of these items we have in relation to the total. So with that, multiplying these two columns right here, the weight by the duration, we find the weighted duration and then the sum of it is 2.7 years on average. And I've shown one a little example right here for in the case of this security with uh, longer than two years to mature. Actually, this one right here, one to two years. Anyhow, so for liabilities, we do the same and we find the weighted average duration to be 1.03. So already you can see that the duration of assets, which is 2.7 years, is greater than the duration of liabilities, which is only 1.03. So correctly calculating duration gap gives us a positive duration of 1.72, meaning that if interest rates were to go up, assets would fall more than liabilities since these assets are that their value is greater than the value of liabilities. So they're going to fall more in value than the liabilities, causing the bank's net worth to decrease. So that's the danger right there. When you have a positive gap, what happens when interest rates go up on the value of assets and liabilities? So to show that impact, we reintroduce modified duration seen in a separate uh, video presentation, which is basically Macaulay duration multiplied by this factor right here, which is the ratio of the change in interest rates and uh, this uh, discount factor of one point hour, or one point the market interest rates. So with the duration gap of 1.72, multiplying it by this factor, reflecting a 100 basis point change, 
uh, in interest rates increase specifically in interest rates we find the percentage change in net worth to be 1.56 percent by the way we can also approximately get the same outcome by calculating the percentage change in assets and subtracting the percentage change in liabilities from it it's going to give us about the same anyhow what's the implication right here it's telling us that this hundred basis point increase in interest rates will bring about a 1.56 percent drop in the value of the bank's equity so that's an issue and so to summarize, if interest rates rise when duration gap is positive, the value of rate-sensitive assets and rate-sensitive liabilities will both go down. However, because there are more rate-sensitive assets than there are liabilities, the decline in the value of rate-sensitive assets will exceed the decline in the value of rate-sensitive liabilities, and that's the reason why net worth goes down. A little crying face for you right there because net worth is stockholder equity its decline may negatively affect stock prices investors are not going to be so enamored by that uh, by that going on as well as also perhaps even more importantly cause problems with the bank's capital adequacy requirements which is an important indicator of bank solvency so as uh, a supplement we can also calculate the change in bank assets and bank in li and bank liabilities when interest rates go up so with the same hundred basis point increase and making sure to include the duration of assets which we determine to be approximately 2.7 we find that bank assets can be expected to drop by about 2.45 percent since we have a hundred million dollar assets that gives us a dollar change of 2.45 million dollars approximately which is by how much we can expect uh, the value of the assets to go down when interest rates go up. Likewise, for the bank's liabilities, we can find that the percentage uh, drop in the value of liabilities is going to be about 0.94%. All right, and we want to make sure that the duration here is going to be the duration of bank liabilities. We do have $95 million in liabilities from the balance sheet I showed you just now. So that tells us that we can expect the value of liabilities to go down by about $890,000. So with that, we can see here that this rise in interest rates will lead to a decline, a percentage decline of 1.56% in the bank's net worth calculated. Um, alternatively by subtracting the percentage change in liabilities which is this adjusted of course by the ratio of liabilities to assets from the percentage change in assets so that gives us exactly the same thing as we would get when we directly calculated the uh, percentage change in net worth using duration gap and you can also look at the same results in dollar terms by subtracting the uh, the dollar change in liabilities of about 890,000 from the dollar change in assets of about 2.45 uh, uh, million dollars to give us 1.56 uh, million dollars in value loss with respect to the bank's net worth and so to wrap this up because duration of assets exceeds duration of liabilities as we have shown in this example a rise in interest rates will cause the value of assets to fall more than the value of liabilities leading to a decline in net worth and that's it let's keep learning